allow me choose my successor just as I allowed you choose yours. It seems to be the message from Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari to the governors of the All Progressives Congress. We look at this meeting he had with the governors of the ruling party yesterday. And the prelate of Methodist Church Nigeria has revealed details of his abduction and release from kidnappers' den. We analyze these and the overall security situation in the country. And we look at the headlines on the pages of today's national newspapers in of the press. Very good morning to you and welcome to the program. My name is Kofi Patels. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning wishing live from our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. Interesting conversations as you heard in that intro. But let's start off with a look at what's been trending in Nigeria and around the world over the past 24 hours. We start with the enforcement of a, a commercial motorcycle ban, popularly called Okada ban, uh, which is to begin today across local government areas, selected local government areas in Lagos State. Um, of course, the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Saolu, had made that announcement in the wake of the killing and lynching of a young man um, at Lekki Phase 1, the sound engineer, David Imo, who was killed at uh, Lekki Phase 1. This is in response to the public outcry and the public backlash following the killing of that man by suspected Okada riders. Um, indeed, there's been an investigation launched into this. We've not seen the results of that investigation uh, to the fullest. It's still ongoing, and um, the governor uh, did announce this Okada ban. Today is June 1, and the day has come for the official commencement of the ban, however, um, they had gone, they had gone against um, out uh, to target and to you know rid the streets of these Okada uh, riders in some parts of uh, uh, Lagos State. Indeed, hundreds of motorcycles have been picked up. Hundreds of motorcycles uh, have been apprehended in some parts of Lagos, despite the fact that the ban was not already on. So we have the following local government areas in, in view at Ikeja. A, a local government area. We have uh, Etiosa, um, Lagos Island, Surulere, uh, Papa, and Lagos mainland uh, local governments where uh, this is supposed to commence. This ban is supposed to commence today, uh, June 1, 2022. Indeed, the Lagos State Government had put out uh, a message on its social media platforms uh, with um, uh, graphic designs and e flyers um, giving the public. The necessary information. Let's uh, go back to the Lekki Phase 1 and listen to the residents uh, of that area give their views on this ban. In Lagos, commercial motorcycles popularly called Okada is an important means of transportation for residents. The reason is not far-fetched. The heavy and frustrating gridlock experience on most routes across the states. Over time, there have been complaints by commuters about the reckless attitudes of some riders, which has resulted in accidents leading to deaths and lifetime injuries. Some of these riders have been accused of aiding and abetting crimes due to their quick and easy movement, while some other disobey traffic lights. The Lagos state government in the past years has ruled out laws banning the right in some areas of the state. In 2006, under the Bola Tunumbu government, Okada riders were banned from operating between 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. every day. In 2012, the Lagos state government under the Babatunde Fashola administration placed a total ban on Okada riders on the Keja axis of the state. Same thing in 2017, under the Akin Wumi Ambode administration. The state government announced ban on Okada activities on major highways, bridges and roads. And under the Baba Jide Songwulu's administration in 2020, the government banned Okada from plying 40 bridges and flyovers across the state. The ban seems not to have been able to get commercial bikers off restricted areas. Recently, a young man and father of two was killed and set ablaze by an Okada rider over a disagreement. This made citizens take to social media to call for the total ban of Okada riders in the state. No more Okada! No more Okada! 
Residents of Lekki Phase 1, where the incident occurred, staged a protest against Okada Raiden in the area. Based on record, the immense gratitude of Lela to the indefinable government of Lagos State, Mr. Vladimir Songwulu, for throwing his full weight and that of the entire state towards protecting of lives of property of residents in Lagos State by imposing, by imposing the ban on Okada in the local government of the state. The government has called for the ban for the 1st of June, 2022. But we, the resident of Lekki Phase 1, cannot risk the lives of all residents and have the Okada running free in a neighborhood. In a recent order, the Lagos State renewed its ban on Okada business, which will take effect from the 1st of June. All the analysis will be effective from the 1st of June. This is the first banning that we are going to be embarking on, so that others know that in a short while, it's either to get out or for something else to do. And from 1st of June, from 1st of June, there are LCDs that are underneath them. We're going to publish them. We're going to list all of them. And so we're given the notice now. Days to the effective date of the ban, commercial motorcyclists are having a field day in Aja area of the state. They can still allow them on their streets, but on the main road, they should ban them. They should just go. I don't want uh, Akara to be banned because they, are, they have helped a loss, actually. You know, in a situation whereby you want to go to a place and you need to be, to be fast, you just enter a bike and go to a place rather than enter Moruba because you have to wait till the thing full before you can move. I don't think it should be banned because I actually use them for work in the morning when I go to work. And also in the after, in the evening when I go for work, I use them. So if there is no bike, so what do I use as transport means? That's the fastest means of transportation for the citizen. Because once there is traffic and you have to get to work before 8, you have to try all possible means to meet up with the time. So they don't have to ban bike. I will advise the government let them try and bring people who are educated, like from secondary, and employ them. They will be sensible. But when you bring Jagobon, Yoruba illiterate, Awusa illiterate, Yibo illiterate, they, they don't know anything. But when they are educated, they will, be, they will be sensible to be doing rubbish. About the express, I can stay with that with government. But the road that remain without no express way, they can still apply. At least you have time and give them to be closing. They can see apply other way apart from the express. The riders appeal to the government to rethink the ban. All of us will see here now. And no one thief. Because this work where they see so now they make to survive ourselves. First thing, because if come and say they don't want back again, that they affect all of even a passenger where they enter back, then they affect them. Because of everybody where they see now, they get their own family to feed. Government no provide another alternative for us. Gather a day for this work where they see so. They don't see work to work. They don't see work for this country. But the thing where government is say to say about the issue say may provide another alternative for us before they ban us. What they want us to do now? They want to ban the Okada. I have family. I have two kids and wife. Making TV. I'm feeding them with this work that I'm doing. Okay, well, okay, if they said they will ban the Okada now, which work do they want to provide for us? Okada. Now I tell the feed my family now. Somebody like me now, I have like four picking. Two girls, two boys. Now wait till I tell they pay them school fees. I don't get under work again. When you push me now, which work I'll do again? I don't get work. I don't serve it I don't serve it do anything. Only Okada now they do now. We see they apologize or we they beg the state government. You know. I bet may they forgive us oh, because we like this, some people they don't have any other thing doing in Lagos and the Okada they pay them. Some people have family and they sponsor their family with bike. So we don't have anything, I bet. That's our only reason with us. Oh. Okada ban in Lagos State has lingered for years without effect. The coming days will expose the effectiveness or otherwise of the government's ban order on Okada businesses from restricted areas. Gazika. Or high chassis plus TV news.
So it remains to be seen uh, how this uh, ban will uh, be enforced uh, from today being June 1. Um, some residents of Lagos State have expressed some apprehension uh, about uh, the reaction of uh, some Okada riders around the city, um, you know, some threatening to um, to withdraw their votes from the government of the day in Lagos State, uh, some appealing to the government uh, to rescind the decision, and some members of the um, northern community in Lagos saying they support the government uh, in this drive. Um, indeed, we, we got news uh, of one particular construction company known as Hitech asking its staff to remain at home for the day uh, in order to just to protect them uh, and if, if eventually there'd be any uh, unrest in the city. Um, but hopefully that will not happen. We don't want to see any um, any violence. What we want is peace. And hopefully Lagosians will be able to go about their business today uh, without any harassment or any danger or any protest. Um, hopefully that happens. Let, let's move on uh, to some more training stories. Now, this one happens to do with uh, um, you know, a slogan surrounding the ANSARS protests. Um, of 2020, uh, the scar of the protests is still, or the scar of what ended the protest is still fresh in the minds of a lot of people in the country. Uh, don't forget that this was a youth-driven protest. And um, as a matter of fact, one of the slogans, especially for those who were protesting in the southwestern part of the country, was Sorosoke, uh, which is a Yoruba uh, 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 which are Yoruba words, so it's okay, uh, is one of the words or slogans that were used during the protest, or that was used during the protest, and um, it's been popular not just in the southwestern part of the country, but indeed around Nigeria, synonymous with the NSAS protest. But um, this slogan, it seems, is not just a popular in Nigeria, because um, a book was released uh, by someone outside the country, a UK author, Trish Lawrence and Trish Lawrence released a book titled Sorosoke, The Young Disrupts Disrupts or Dis Disruptors rather of uh, uh, an African mega city. Of course, Lagos is uh, described as a mega city. Well, about 5,000 people have signed a petition seeking the recall of that book. Um, what happened was that um, Trish Lawrence gave an interview about the book. Uh, where she claimed that she uh, created or coined the name Sorosoke Generation. Um, so she made those claims, and this, of course, has drawn um, the anger of a lot of people in the country. Now, the background to this is that she wrote this book, and this book won her uh, the 2021 Nine Dots Prize. Uh, this is a prize that lords uh, creative thinking and that tackles contemporary societal issues in Lord's creative thinking that tackles contemporary societal issues. All right. And um, the phrase, so it's okay, it's a Yoruba phrase, which means speak out or speak up. All right. So now in her book, Lorenz, who is based in the German capital, Berlin, examined the bravery of youth who left the movement or led the movement and featured the views of some Nigerians who took part in a demonstration. Now, she gave an inter interview where she um, said that she was the one who coined the name or gave the protesters the name Sorosoke Generation. As of Tuesday, um, about 5,000 people, mostly Nigerians, have started uh, signing the petition seeking the recall of the book from the publication. All right, and some are also saying that she should um, apologize to Nigerians. Uh, and uh, the interview that she granted be taken down. Now, what do people think of this personally? I think that um, if she writes a book on a subject matter, uh, that is uh, you know, a public matter that anyone can write about, there is nothing wrong. Nobody owns the phrase, so it's okay. Anyone can write about it, whether you're a Nigerian or not. If you're interviewing people, if you're discussing a concept or an event that occurred in the country, it's an event. It's something that happened. Anyone can write about it. That is what happens all over the world. However, um, the claim that she made that, uh, you know, that um, she coined the phrase Sorosoke Generation or gave the protesters the name Sorosoke Generation, which they know not to be true, is what should be, to me, the bone of contention. And of course, rightly, uh, the petitioners have said that, have demanded 
that a public apology be written to Nigerians and that the interview uh, be taken down. All right, I would, I would really love to sit down with this lady to find out why or how she came uh, to be the, the originator of the, the phrase Sorosoke that she's claiming um, Sorosoke generation. It's interesting. Uh, the petitioners are also saying that, um, uh, that she, how can she name and claim what was already existing, uh, that she has no connection with the struggle, yet she capitalizes on it, benefits and profits off the trauma of Nigerians to claim. Uh, they say that this is evidence by her winnings from the Nine Dots Prize, which amounts to about a remuneration of about uh, 100,000 US dollars. All right. For me, anyone can write on any subject matter, you know, as long as it's not a copyrighted or um, uh, patented, uh, uh, um, you know, or trademarked uh, subject. You know, if it's not a copyrighted subject, anyone can write about it. This is a protest that happened. It's in the public domain. You know, I mean, uh, the networks and international media have written about it. Someone says, I want to write a book on what happened in Nigeria. They're free to do that. Um, but I think where the contention should be is in the claim uh, she made that she originated the name Sorosoke Generation, which needs to be looked into. All right, let, let's move on. Let's move on to um, another very not too palatable one, very sad one. And of course, we've been counting the days since the Abuja Kaduna uh, ill-fated train attack and a kidnap of the survivors of that attack uh, who have been in captivity uh, for more than 60 days now. A video was released, I think this should be the second video, uh, by the abductors. This shows the abductees and some of them made some statements. One of the um, abductees made a very heartfelt appeal, but the point was made that her son is a sickle cell, um, uh, uh, you know, she is a sickle cell patient and needs urgent attention. A number of the abductees in the video uh, said that they had been sick and they were still sick and needed to be released. And this is really worrying. Uh, for 67 days, uh, today 68 days and counting, uh, these Nigerians are still in captivity. In fact, not all of them are Nigerians, some are foreigners are still in captivity. What is going on? Let's roll the tape on the video released by the terrorists. And when we come back, we'll do some more talking before we call it a wrap on off on the trending segment. Stay with us. My name is Mariama Abubakar Bobo. I was um, one of those captured uh, on that train with four of my children and my husband. Uh, we are appealing to the federal government and our families and everyone that can to please come to our aid. We've been here for 62 days in an unfavorable, uh, inhabitable condition, unimaginable. We've been sick. In fact, my one of my sons, two of them are even sick at the moment with no medical supply. So we're, ple we're pleading with you to please come to our aid. Abdullahi, one of the captives of uh, the Abuja Kaduna train attacks. Uh, we are appealing to the federal government to once again uh, come to our aid. Uh, we've been here for 62 days. Most of us here are sick. Yes and we are not in good condition and uh, every day the situation gets deteriorating. We are appealing to the federal government to please come to our aid before we start losing our lives. Really, really heart-wrenching um, video to watch to see that these people are still in captivity and uh, the very inhumane circumstances under which they're, they're, they're being kept. Uh, one hopes that the message has been passed to the federal government and that they, uh, the government will do what they can um, to release the subducted people. It's, it's really sad. Um, only, one can only imagine the horrendous conditions that uh, they are being kept under. Um, one of the things I noticed from this video is that um, Unlike the first, the previous one that was released, the abductors put a curtain at the back of the video to cover the background. Because I noticed from the first video um, that the terrain was shown. And if you remember, you could see the background, even a little mountain 
at the back end. Some people on social media were able to uh, do some, some geographical analysis of that video, people who are qualified professionals and who can use technology, uh, they were able to do some geographical analysis and came up with a map, a map showing exactly where the abductors were when the video was recorded. And they said, see, look at the mountain behind you. They gave the name of the mountain. And look at the terrain. There's another um, a geographical landmark that if you look at the map, all right, you look at the map, the satellite image, you'd see that that geographical landmark is also near that mountain. And it was a match. And they said, I mean, we don't need to do this, but we're doing this on Twitter because we want to call the government out that this is something they can do very easily. I mean, that they, they did it on their laptops, wherever they were tweeting from. You know, this is something the government can do easily. And this is where these people were when they recorded this video. All right. So it means that they are in the vicinity and they talked about the fact that it's not far from the Cameroons. Um, so why is it difficult uh, or was it difficult for the first video to at least give an indication to the security authorities of where these people were? People could do it on Twitter. Now, we can see that from this second video, the abductors have covered the background. They put a curtain there. Probably someone you know, connected to them must have seen the conversation on Twitter and said, guys, see you next time we record a video, cover the background so that we, we, they won't see where we are. You know? And this says a lot. This says that these uh, terrorists are on social media or they have collaborators on, so, on social media monitoring what everyone is saying. Now, as a matter of fact, um, the, the gunman in this video, uh, the terrorist in this video, for the first time, spoke in English, all right? This is the first time they would be speaking in English uh, in previous videos they had spoken in Hausa. Let's roll another tape and listen to some more. We'll come back and uh, we'll do some analysis before we call it a day on this. We are the people that capture those people in the train along Abuja and Al Kaduna road. So they are appealing to us saying that they wanted to talk to us. My name is Gladys Bume, me and Mori. I'm appealing particularly to Professor Yanni Oshibanjo, who was my classmate, 78, 79, law school. You are a grandfather, you are a father. Come to our aid, because we've been here for 62 days. I have a son who is a sickler, and I don't know his condition. I'm pleading that the federal government and Amechi, who is the minister for, for the transportation, should come to our assistance. Really sad one, Miriam Abuka, who says that, uh, you know, uh, two of her sons are seriously sick, are sick um, and that uh, they need to be released as soon as possible. And of course, another passenger uh, whose name is Gladys, who said that her condition has been unfavorable. You know, uh, she just heard Gladys speaking there, uh, saying that she was pleading with the vice president, Professor Emil Shibajo, who was her classmate in 78-79 law school. Um, she says, your grandfather and father come to our aid because we have been here for 62 days and I have a son uh, who is a sickler. I do not know his condition now. She wants to get home to him so that she can uh, attend to him. Really sad one indeed. There's nothing more to add. They've made the plea um, and we can see that the video was not released immediately on the day it was recorded. It took some days uh, before they released it. These guys are smart. These guys are um, social media savvy. All right, these guys uh, mean business and they know what they're doing. I won't be surprised if they're watching too, to us right now. Um, and we see this repeated in the Northwest as we've seen it happen in the Northeast. We see it repeated in the Southwest or the Southeast as well. Um, for instance, you had gunmen attacking uh, an office of the Anambra Broadcasting Service uh, a couple of days ago. Why would they attack a media establishment? It shows that these attackers, these gunmen, be it in the northern part of the country or south, um, are calculated. They plan, they, they strategize, and the attacks are not just itinerant attacks. No, these attacks are meditated, premeditated. These attacks are calculated. These attacks are meticulously planned. If they go cut someone's head, they didn't just cut the person's head. They have reasons. If they attack a media establishment, they have reasons. If they go attack a local government 
uh, council headquarters of a serving governor in a number of states, they have reasons. They know what they are doing. But the question is, does the Nigerian government know what it is doing? We pray for the best. We pray that these abductees are safely returned home uh, to their families. That's been a trending segment right here on The Breakfast. We'll be right back after this break. We have Opunabo in Kutara standing by for of the press. <laughs> 